I think that we've admitted that we will sometimes write down some things on a piece of paper, and each one of us has a copy of it, of things we intend on maybe talking about. Yeah, we've got a lot of food and all the beverages here at the table, sure. but we've also got a pen and a paper with some notes taken on them. Well, this week, you didn't get one. No, I didn't. No, I thought I'd just try something fun. Aislinn OTC. That's off the cuff, in case you're wondering. You're going to hear about pumpkins? Pumpkins, pumpkins everywhere. Someone's going on a trip, and a trip we're beginning to plan. I love going on a trip. Shoeless houses, skunks. Pull up a chair, because we have a lot to talk about. Dropping in a blooper at the end where I'm like snarfing and like coughing and like snotting yeah. on the microphone. You don't like that? That's not cool. I didn't even know you did that. Okay. When I listen back to the episodes <laughs> during editing, these are the judgments that I have to make. So I invite our guests to go back to just the last 10 seconds of last week's episode. No. Well, no. Yeah, y- y'all are, it's gross. It's just me snarfing around on the microphone. Okay. If they did, though, they'd hear some very performative language. <laughs> they would. I've got a shitload of pumpkins in the back of my truck right now. Oh. <laughs> back of the car. Well, good. We will be able to worm all the things around that might be wormy. Yes. The other day, you let me know that a good friend of ours, a chef, local chef, was coming out to the farm. Yeah, she reached out and said, hey, you have a need for pumpkins? And I was like, oh, yeah, we give them to our pigs or it's good for our chickens. It helps to worm them. It just makes people happy to see animals, farm animals eating pumpkins. So, yeah, come on out. And so she came out on Shop Small Saturday and she brought the back end of her car full of pumpkins Took a pumpkin back to the pigs. They were super happy to have that. I have a pumpkin cracking post. Yeah. I'll pick up my pumpkin and I'll bang it on the corner of this post Mm -hmm. of the fence. Mm -hmm. And I'll crack in half. Yeah. And that's what you throw to the pigs. Yeah. Or or the chickens. I would do the same thing. Right. Exactly. You want them to get to the guts. Yeah. So everybody's getting lots of pumpkin this year. I actually have an idea and I'm excited to see what you have in the back of your car. This is what I imagine happening when I open, it's a hatchback. When I open up the hatchback, Uh it's going to be like a jackpot of pumpkins coming out of a slot machine. (laughs) I have an idea. Mm -hmm. We're getting lambs. That's new news. Yeah, we're getting lambs. Justin, my friend Justin. Lambs are skipping rabbits rabbits. and skipping meat chickens. That's how it works. They're at the top of the list. That's how it works. What's happening? They bump to the top. My friend Justin, who lives in, I think, Prairie View area, wants to start a flock. And he asked, hey, you want to start a flock together? And I said, well, what does that mean? And he said, well, I have two young rams. They're Dorper sheep. And Dorper sheep are well-bred for our region. They also, you don't have to shear them. Oh, yeah. So we're getting two lambs before the end of December. Two rams, young Mm. rams before the end of December. And then we're going to be looking for ewes. And we're going to build a flock of 10. That's the goal. In order to create a breeding flock that helps us breed for meat. So I think that um, we're going to need to keep the back, back, back pasture where the bees are and where stuff is back there at the very back of the pasture. Right. I think we're going to leave that closed off until we can get a full fence put around the beehive. The bees, yeah. So what I think is some of these, you should take them to the very back and just let them compost on that land back there. Because what would potentially happen is we would grow some of our own pumpkins. Okay, so what does that look like? Rather than giving them to the chickens or the pigs, yep. I'm going to just get them on the mule, drive a bunch of pumpkins back there. Yep. You'll show me where to just literally drop them on the ground? Well, so the idea and the reason I jumped to the lambs is because you want to start growing food for your animals in your pastures. Right. So if I can grow pumpkins, right. one of the things we've talked about specifically is that feeding your animals pumpkins is really good for their health, worms, and it's also really good for their meat. I expect us to have pigs in the near future. We've already, like, once this begins, yeah. once we're doing livestock production, yeah. we're doing livestock production. What happened? You put the call out for more pumpkins after you got this first rash of pumpkins? No, 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 no. This was the first offering that I had gotten, and I, my friend Laura messaged me and said, hey, I've got a friend. She's got a lot of pumpkins and she wants to know if after Thanksgiving you want the pumpkins. And I was like, sure, whatever. I'll take the pumpkins. And then she said, this gal got in touch with me 
and said, I'm going to get with some other friends. And well, I, I got had the pumpkins no across idea. the street. I got this lady's pumpkins. Yeah, I had no idea. And then, I, and then she goes, oh, see those pumpkins over there, Caddy Corner across the street? Yeah. Yeah. Those are yours too. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm telling you, jackpot of pumpkins. <laughs> So the chickens are going to get a compost pile of a ton of pumpkins. The pigs are going to get more pumpkins than they need. We're going to plant some pumpkins in the very back pasture by just letting some compost, pumpkins compost down over there. I'm sure some wildlife will eat upon it as well. Maybe they'll stay out of my gardens. <laughs> Quick skunk update. I took the traps on uh-huh. the other side of your parents' house. Yeah. Caught the, another skunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have caught the neighbor's cat a couple times. <laughs> but that seems to have dried up. I go outside this morning uh-huh. and I have seen zero skunk activity in our backyard after getting two from our backyard area gone. Yeah. But overnight, a skunk came out and put his little braille into the, all of the mulch piles around the backyard. <laughs> his braille. So I have a couple questions about the sheep. Yeah. You said you're getting two rams, boys. Yes. And then a you. Yes. From somewhere else. Yes. Then out pop, how often do sheep lay? I don't know yet. Is a sheep litter only one? Or do they drop like pigs? They can have twins. No, they don't drop like pigs. But I know they could do twins and singles. Yeah. It got to the point with your parents' cattle and pigs, because those are your folks. Yeah, yeah. That's like their pets. Yeah. We help love on them and help raise them and help feed them from time to time. But Yeah. They benefit the farm. We were just about to buy hay and stuff because it was so dry. Yep. Now it is the opposite. Yep. This place is lush and green and all the animals have to be happy. Justin is an agricultural specialist for the National Center for Appropriate Technology. And what he said was, I told him, I said, we had the drought this year. It was pretty bad. I've got two full-grown steer and two pot belly pigs. What if we wanted to add some other types of animals? Like 25, he was like, 25 is how many your property could do. He started talking about planting. He called it cover crops. It's not exactly cover crops, but the idea is, is that you're just like I do. He's You're developing your land. You're developing your land. No, he knows insects. He knows right. seeds. He knows uh But the na- partnership comes with the education that you guys trade. Yeah. And he is flush with plenty of that. Yeah. yeah that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so where I was going with my, we we're about to buy hay, is do you just let the sheep out and the green on the yep. gr- ground is good enough? Yep. Or are we going to start buying feed? Well, we're going to have to have some feed because you, you feed them kind of like we do our animals up here. You feed them to keep their attention. Yeah. You feed them to warm them. You put some diatomaceous earth in their feed and that helps warm them. Along with the pumpkins we'd leave for them next year or yeah. this year, I guess. I mean, we're going to have pumpkins around. They're going to be here in a couple of weeks. So I suppose uh, that was my last question. When is this going down? Before the end of December. Okay. We're getting have, I mean, Shit, stay it's tuned. happening. This is, this, Isn't is, this, this is news, right? This is exciting. I'm plunging my hands into dirt I've never plunged my hands into with this thing. See, we raised sheep in 4-H. When I lived in Bernie, I grew up in up to fourth grade and I was always in 4-H and we raised sheep then. Yeah. So we had that experience of that whole process, but that was very rigid. Like you bought the lamb on this date, you fed it only this stuff, was, you, 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 everybody sheared on the same day, the everybody castrated the on day. the same day, yeah. like everything was all like a part of the process right. of raising a sheep to go to market. This is actually the breeding part of it, the whole, yeah. my grandmother, no, my great grandmother, Olga Klaus. She was in Liberty Hill, her family, her her husband and all their children had property up in Liber- Liberty Hill, Texas. Okay. And she was a shepherd. But what I learned was she wasn't a, she- a sheep farmer until after her pa- husband passed. So she took on that part of the farm farming because it was easier than taking care of the other animals. Isn't that interesting? I knew they were shepherd, I knew they were sheep farmers. But I didn't know that she was the sheep farmer. That makes me feel so excited. I lied. Last question. How quickly will the flock get to 10? That was the reason why I asked about multiple I don't know. I mean, I guess I still have to talk more to Justin about it. But I guess if we get three or four more you, I don't know. I don't know what the... like. to bring in. You're trying to avoid... It's animal husbandry. Yes. We are becoming animal husbands. (laughs) Oh, So excited. I'm kind of processing a lot of it right in this moment. Right, right, exactly. This is actually breeding. It isn't just No, like it's growing raising... the flock. Yeah. But at some point, because this is the research we've done about rabbits, mm-hmm. you don't just buy a boy and a girl and they create your yeah. flock. Yeah. 
you because have to then trade you're going to have and, genetic issues. Yeah, yeah. So you got to think all that out. Yep. Right. Yep. That's why I'm excited to have like this process. Goodness, I'm looking for all kinds of research to do right now anyway to keep myself, my mind good and busy. Horror movie, the movies Ace and watches quick aside here. We're in a thing right now where I'm watching movies and you're not watching them with me most of the time. Yeah, I'm not super entertained with the general yeah. mainstream. But then every, where everything all at once comes along. Yeah, but that wasn't mainstream. I know. But I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to keep you invested in this kind of thing. But I go see them first. And, and like the weird thing that's... about me is that I'm not on, I'm not in the mainstream, but I'm also not on, like, I'm, I'm on one side of the spectrum, right? So that takes out like a whole ginormous section of things that I'm just like not even willing to check out. And you're kind of, we're processing that as right. a couple. Um, Lamb is the name of this movie. It was marketed as a horror movie. And this is the thing about the menu. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to keep track of all the rabbit trails, but I, I'm finding them all fun. The menu is a movie that just came out. Our chef friend Zelina that brought all those pumpkins. Yep. I asked her, you saw the menu? And I, there was a question I knew the answer to already because a right. professional chef has right. gone to see the menu. Because as she and my friend Harold, who helped us review that movie over at Beer and a Movie, mm -hmm. talked about was very few movies come out about a chef mm -hmm. just like yeah. very and few I movies come out about a plumber. Yeah. So when a plumber movie comes out, all the plumbers go see it. Usually anything that comes out about chefs right. or food. Right, exactly. I, so I'm since at, we I'm share, least look at it. <laughs> since we share this interest in food, uh -huh. and according to Harold and Zelina, it satirizes very well professional chefing and kitcheting. Mm -hmm. And then the food presentations are that frou-frou shit that you and I, I think, really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Stylized. I, it's well styled. Locally sourced, grown at their own place. I, I just, I think you might like this movie, even though it has some horror elements. Mm -hmm. It's that tricky line of are these horror elements or not? And that's all about your own personal rules, which makes sense. I'm just trying to figure, I'm, I'm tweaking my algorithm to match yours there. I'm trying to. Yeah. I think it's ever evolving for but me. But since we're going to have lambs on the farm, you really should watch lamb. Stay tuned. Yeah, well, we'll see. I've lost the rest of the rabbit trails though. <laughs> well, I was expecting that. Okay. <laughs> I've got to get these pumpkins out of my car. Mm -hmm. because you're taking it and going on a big trip this weekend. Yeah, it's uh, every year. Birthday weekend, first weekend of December That's right. is uh, my girl's trip to Wimberley. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah, thank you. I like the number four because my birthday is December the 4th. I'm going to be 44. That's a strange, interesting thing to be. So I'm trying to get everything ready for you to have a easeful departure. Get the car completely. I took it and vac vacuumed it out today at one of those places where the vacuums are like industrial gray. And then you, you put have a, a whole shitload detailing. of pumpkins inside of it. Well, hey, that's how, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of course. It's our life. Yeah, right. <laughs> I couldn't get it home to let you take it off and t before I had to get the shitload of pumpkins in the back. <laughs> what is your mental checklist before you go on a trip like this? You can do it every year. Depends on kind of if it rains or not. I might need to go out and water my greenhouse in my nursery in the morning yeah yeah finish getting myself packed together because we're actually going to go hiking right i had intentions being that it's my 44th birthday i had intentions but my intentions evolved because what is best for my personality is to just simply go with the flow at any moment in time no yeah. matter what i said i'm going to do this thing well if that doesn't seem to be coming together the way it's supposed to then it's supposed to come together the way it comes together what were you intending what was what was the goal well, do you remember that I originally had said I wanted to go like on a meditative fasting like retreat of a few days and, you know, I had a whole plan in mind. But the place that I really wanted to do that, where I felt like I could actually do that, was all the way in Dallas. So it was a really long drive by myself. About seven hours. Yeah. Also, I think for me, the best way for me to do a meditative retreat type of thing is to do it in some sort of activity like Hiking. Okay. Hiking's a really good way for me to do that type of meditative, sure. you know, trance even. I can even get into good long sitting meditation when I've had, when I've been able to get out in nature and move and get active yeah. and move my body. Right. So it'll be easier for me to get into that place. That's kind of like the annual trip that you and I take. There's going to be an element of that in it. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So I just had intentions of wanting to do that. And then I thought, you know what I need to do? I've never done an overnight pack pack in. I said last week, Tommy's back and she's been doing these like sectional overnight things. And I want to do a sectional, which is like the Appalachian trail 
is a sectional trail that has sections mm-hmm. and you can do the entire trail. What was that movie with uh, Reese Witherspoon? That was the one she did. But well, yeah, I don't remember the character in that I movie. I think it was called The Walk, maybe, but I'm not sure because there's another movie called The Walk. I don't know. There's uh, it was Walk the Line. Yeah, there's all kinds. That's of Johnny movies. Cash. Yeah, exactly. So I looked, and the best place in Texas. Everybody said a good place to do one in Texas, especially if you're not like a very seasoned packer of this kind, is Colorado Bend State Park. Well, Colorado Bend State Park, I looked, and I was like, that's it. It's perfect. It's perfect because you just like go, you pack in about a mile or two and you get to a primitive site, you put up your stuff, uh-huh. and then you can hike all over long hiking trails, Is but that- you're very close to print. So I wanted to hike in, pack in without food because if I can fast overnight, no big deal. Oh, that was your intention. Yeah. Have water. Water and no phone and... We'll do this thing. But then I discovered that Colorado Bend State Park was having a park-wide hunt. What do you mean a park-wide hunt? Okay, so as I understand it, like anywhere else in Texas, they have wildlife that they have to manage on their property, just like we're doing. The way that they manage probably too many deer, too many hogs, too many turkeys is to do a scheduled park hunt. This is an answer question for sure. Yeah. I know you have to have your license, of course, but I'm sure you have to have certain tags and you have, I'm sure, reservations. I bet you're on a list and you can get on the list if you do whatever it is. No clue. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if they're camping. I never even realized they did this kind of thing, but it makes perfect sense to me, especially in Texas. But even after going to Hawaii where they have public hunting in Hawaii, I'm like, oh, this is how they do it. So what they do is say, okay, hikers... You're, we, you can't just come in and hike this weekend right. because we've got hunters doing the hiking this weekend and they're doing their thing this weekend. Yeah. So anyways, that didn't, co- that didn't come together. And then it looked like the weather was going to be like 43 and raining. And I was like, yeah, I'm not and doing this. And whatever it is here, it's going to be a lot colder seven well, hours I was, north. I was, I've been keeping my eye, eye on the weather north. I'm a weather watcher, so that's easy. What we're going to do is we're going to go get an Airbnb at Fredericksburg. We're doing that for one night. Then we'll be close enough to Enchanted Rock to where we can hike the summit and we can also do another hike. So we can hike on my birthday if we want to, and then we can hike the next day, which is Monday, see what we see what else we want to do. In the meantime, we're also doing my typical girls trip to Wimberley, market days, all that cool stuff, yeah. lots of good food. I'm gathering up the food Your now. Your style hoping, of Christmas shopping, I imagine. The, exactly. Yeah. I'm hoping that after we get done here, you'll, and after you've done the pumpkins, you will and, and make traps, some baba ganoush. And the baba ganoush. Yeah, we're adding yes. that to the list. Please make some baba ganoush that I can take with me. And then I'll take the whole eggs. Order up. <laughs> so you asked what I'm doing to get ready to go. I'm yeah. telling you. I'm telling you what I'm doing to get ready to go. I'm packing for hiking. I'm packing food, all kinds of delicious food. Gluten-free, almost dairy-free mm-hmm. foods. And Tommy's coming with me. She's showing up tomorrow. We're going to water the plants. We're going to get ourselves packed in the car. We're going to drive to San Antonio. I'm going to stop at my my favorite place to shop. Mm-hmm. I'm so predictable, aren't I? Like, I shop at this place, this place, and this place. Oh, stop it. You were looking for hiking shoes. <laughs> I know, but even if I'm looking for... That's the place to go buy hiking shoes. It's the that place to buy any for shoes for me. That's true. <laughs> Look, yeah, think about it. Go back to our when? ACL episode just like, a few yeah, weeks ago. Exactly. So I'm going to go up there and I'm going to buy myself a pair of Keens, but I'm also going to look for some hiking pants, which got me thinking about Your watch hiking. has made an appearance on the last three or four episodes. And it's because it goes off at least once an hour. It goes an out hour. at the top of the hour. Yeah. I got my hair done today and I start talking about travel because the gal that was washing my hair is from California and she did a RV. They lived in an RV for two years before they landed in where we are down here in Uh Texas. Texas. Uh The way we got talking was about our trip to California when we drove the PCH. Right. You and I. Yeah. And she figured out I was into agriculture, California agriculture coast. We drove the PCH. Where are you from? And she goes, basically, I'm from Pismo Beach. And I was like, yes. I was like, I I was like, we stayed there. We stayed in a hotel or we stayed. I don't even know, but it was. Is that where we had the Airbnb and what got the Indian food? No, that was Santa Cruz. Sure? Santa Barbara. Santa, that was Santa, Santa Barbara. Barbara. That was Santa Barbara. Anyways, it was so much fun to talk to her about traveling. And then it got me thinking about Louisiana, about us traveling to Louisiana for our February trip. That's the current plan. Yeah. 
Louisiana, New Orleans. I totally want to do it. Let's do it. Can't be more excited. Yeah. The very first time I went was with Nick, your, you know, Nick's bachelor party. Tell us about Louisiana and let's talk about fun road tripping. I immediately booked a trip to go back. Uh-huh. I fell in love with it. Yeah. Well, I imagine we stop in College Station, hang out with the boys on the way up because mm-hmm. that just makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's a night. And then we have to do, I have to do some research between College Station and New Orleans for a place to stay. Right. And, and explore Like Charles them. is kind of in between. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. I've, I've looked at it a little Every bit. Every intention it's we not have a- of adding a gambling night to our trip, it, it, we never do it. We you know? never do it. So I, I mean, we, sure. You could take me to Vegas and I might gamble for like an hour or two. <laughs> That's what I would exactly want to do if we stayed. I would, if we didn't, maybe it's not Lake Charles. Maybe it's the other one, Shreveport. But it's something where... It's just not a long drive from where we are. It's not a long drive from College Station, Houston area. It's like seven hours. So it's kind of hard, but we don't like to drive. I don't like to drive seven hours, but... No, we're not going to. Yeah. We're going to stop and we're going to meander and explore. Yeah. yeah. That's what I like to do. But if we stayed in a place like Shreveport or Lake Charles, where mm-hmm. there are floating casino boats... Yeah, yeah, totally. I'd go. That's I would fun. like to go yeah. and budge out an amount of money that you and I don't care if we lose. Yeah. And yeah. I will play some craps yeah. and you hang out next to me. Yeah. You kiss the dice or blow on them or whatever. Yeah. That sounds like fun. And then I'll go play blackjack with you because I think that's your game. It's my 44th year, so it's going to be a good good one. Well, the first thing we do is we pick an amount of money that's a little obscene. <laughs> We don't do obscene with money like that, but a little obscene, an amount that would... We do obscene with like drinks and food sometimes. I think that that's what, if we're I told your dad the other day, the best thing about slowing down on drinking, you basically stopped, especially Mm -hmm. when we're out, it's the... the Oh, don't worry. I'm going to hit you with a $50 shot when, I mean, when I'm, when I want it, it's coming. When I want it, it's coming. Listen to us. There's a couple couple of high rollers. So, (laughs) but a small obscene amount of money in my estimation, Mm -hmm. what I was going to say was we go in and we put it down on four. Um, oh, yeah, that'd be fun. 35 to 1 odds if we hit that. Yeah, that'd be fun. With a spin of a ball. Mm. But obscene amount of money to lay down on that bet? Uh-huh. 25 bucks? I don't know. <laughs> What's an obscene amount of money for us? I don't know. What's an obscene <laughs> amount of money on that? $100? Uh, that's two shots of your shit. So? Mm. That's high rolling, babe. Actually, it's not even high rolling, okay, but so, it's high rolling for us. Okay, so we're going to walk in and uh-huh. throw $100 down on 44 Yeah. I can do that. Plan that now. The Sagittarius in me would do that just to do that. I don't mind doing that if we have created a budget of money we don't mind losing gambling and that's in the budget. Yeah. I was planning on winning the money though. You see what I'm saying? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you're planning in the wrong direction. See, you're like, I'm going to lose this money. And I'm like... That's not what I said. I was very careful with my words. uh I don't mind it if we lost that. Right. But we're not going to lose it. Yeah. We're going to walk in and get $3,500 off the table when we win that forty-four. See, the little um, return on investment regenerative farmer in me goes, hmm, what can I buy with $100? You're planting seeds on that number. The other bet we could do is black or red, and then it's a 50-50 chance. This is way too complicated to me. I don't play games, you guys, so that's the reason why he he can't get me to the casino. Let's move on. Let's move on. We're going to stay in a place that is naturally interesting. Yes, yes. That's what I like. And then the next morning, we would you know, go explore a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Naturally interesting, good food. Then we get to New Orleans. Yep, yep. Okay. I got to do, we got to do some research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm gluten free and all that. You can't just take me over to the regular old places. But here are some things I'd like to do in New Orleans. February in New Orleans means we're eating some f***ing helicopters. Oh, the food oh. is going to be an orgy <laughs> of fine crawfish. dining. Oh, my God. Of fine dining. I want to take you to, oh, God, Court of the Three Sisters, I believe it's called. Your Where mom. We, what? <laughs> what? My mom? Court of the Three Sisters. I Your think that's right. <laughs> yeah. Did you say my mom? <laughs> yes. Why? I don't know. Okay. It just seemed funny. <laughs> okay. There is a restaurant. I think I'm excited about travel. Where we Can would you go tell? to brunch called Court of the Three Sisters, mm-hmm. where we would likely hear jazz uh-huh. and get eggs Benedict. Fresh, like freshly poached eggs and the boiling swirl. They do it right there in front of you and definitely crawfish. I have an important question. Yes. Last time I went to New Orleans, I was not even 21 yet. Well, you haven't drank there yet then. Oh, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's cute. I've even been to a strip club there yeah. and I wasn't. Wait, that can't be possible. Hold on. Let me think about this. I had to have gone back. 
How many times have you been to New Orleans? I was there on New Year's Eve before I was 21. Is that right? That can't be right. Uh, let's pretend like that is right so we can move on. <laughs> Anyways, that's weird. Most importantly, what I was going to say is I was in a strip club. Okay. That's got my mind all twicked out. So, okay. So, so what I'm asking- It's so I remember every strip club I've ever been in. I can tell you, I can be pretty exact about it. This was it. a very strange situation. Yeah. Well, that's when you a... were going to strip clubs so often that they're all probably clouded in your no, mind. No, I didn't go to the strip club at all. But you're in Louisiana, kind of like when you're in Vegas, you go to the strip club. Anyways, I was going to make a bad joke. And the bad joke was, do they do it at 9 a.m.? Because I'm already asleep by 9.30 p.m. What can we do at 9 a.m. in New Orleans? Because I know that New Orleans tends to be the kind of people that likes to be like at- 2 a.m. That was a very sloppy segue. What is the question? <laughs> what are we going to do at 9 a.m. in New Orleans? You're getting yes. granular with this planning right now. Yes. Right? Yes. I don't want to get bogged down on the tourist stuff there. I don't think I've ever seen much of the tourist stuff other than that. That's what I'm saying. I need to know stuff, what happens that isn't at 2 a.m. The tourist stuff would be yeah, Bourbon Street. So I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. I need to go. What else is there? Is a there is a whole art area. There is a whole, the garden district. Do they have a good MoMA? The garden district. Oh yeah. New Orleans okay. is a large, large city. Well, then that sounds fun. Take me to do see that stuff. That sounds fun. But we also have a dog with us. So we have to keep all that in mind oh, too. Oh We're taking the dog. Yeah, of course. That's why we do the road trip. You're right. Mm-hmm. We have dog sitters. No, we the know dog, dog goes sitters with us. now. The dog goes with us. Yeah. We're going to be there during the beginning of the Mardi Gras parades. Yeah. We're going, so We're we February. are going to see that. I'm going to this Mardi Gras parade. Okay. Through Bourbon Street, the whole thing. Okay. Does it happen before 9.30? <laughs> I'm serious, you guys. I'm not good at it anymore. I fall asleep. I just don't even, like, I'm awake early, but I fall asleep. Think how easy it was for me to talk you into staying at home when we went to Arkansas because it was cold, you know, and, I, and there was nothing to do anyways. And I was like, and we're going to get up in the morning and go on a big hike. But we also weren't going to a culinary hotspot in the entire country. I want to eat well. I want to huh. eat New Orleans food when we go to New Orleans. I think we should definitely do that. I'm in need of a explosion of creative when it comes to the kitchen right now. What does that mean? I just feel like I'm stuck in a rut. I think I got tired of what we were cooking over and over and over again. I got all these beautiful vegetables. Seasonality. Oh, it's changing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I didn't make some fajitas and uh -huh. you're like, don't forget the squash. Yes, that and was good. I said, don't worry. What comes with fajitas when you go to the restaurant and get fajitas? Sauteed. onions and mm -hmm. peppers yeah. all nice and sauteed mm -hmm. just add some squash that i've cut into like a big french fry mm -hmm. in with those onions and peppers yeah a few shakes of i don't know cumin chili powder i mean just plain you know yeah. garlic salt maybe yeah don't want to get it too salty but cooking that alongside the fajita meat mm -hmm. which you know when i do fajitas i want that rub mm -hmm. to be on those fajitas six eight hours minimum yeah did my rub, set the fajitas to the side while they just mm, grabbed a lot of flavor. They were very good. And the then flavor was great. hot, hot grill, mm -hmm. three minutes on each side. They're going to be rare in the middle, but they're going to continue cooking. Mm -hmm. And you know you've done it well when the f***ing smoke detector will not stop going off. You started a fire in the kitchen? When I cook inside, the vent is not sucking it out fast enough. Mm. And so sometimes I got to open up windows. When I fail to open windows, I'm reminded to by a very loud beep. <laughs> well, I took the leftovers of it and made myself some quesadillas. Yeah. So that was delicious. Think about that. The onions, the peppers, you know, all Squash. That. Use a little bit of cheese. I try not to... I find that the less real the cheese is, the easier it is on my stomach. Is that the truth? Yeah. Because it's, it's removing dairy from the equation. Yeah. You yeah. could eat a craft single right now, no problem. I well, don't... I don't know about that. The ones that have the that real just a lot of carrageen in them, I think that my stomach is protected. I think it's, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily good for me. Right, like that it's the nutrition I need. You, it's just... You're buying goat cheese from the farmers market. Yes. Is there a difference between goat cheese and? Yes, I don't know what it is about the dairy. The difference between cow dairy and goat dairy is because I can eat the goat cheese. Okay, so no tell problems. me your exact symptoms. Gas, an explosion. My stomach is just like very. Would you like for me to ask more probing questions on this topic? No, okay. not really. Not really. Cut up lettuce, a little tomato, but I use the occasion to make pico mm -hmm. so that I can put it into my guacamole. And then there's leftover pico and you got guacamole for a little while. I think you should look up Karajian. I think that's where unanswered questions came from, is me just saying things and then do I even know what I'm talking about? And then because of our mental and physical preparations for you leaving tomorrow, I brought home Indian food. Yeah, I love that Indian food. They make... Really good 
basic Americanized Indian food. The basics. You know them. Sog paneer. Mm -hmm. Tikka masala with something in it. Ours has got paneer in it. And then some kind of other curry or, you know, we had a vegetable curry because we do vegetarian. It's all basic. Rice, naan. And it's all standard Best American flavored Indian food. I don't expect much better for Corpus Christi, but for what you just described, it's good. It's a spectacular. Yeah, it's really good. They make really good pakoras. They're really fresh and delicious, and I can eat that. That's a little fried spinach, and they fry it in lentil batter. Right. And double checked again. They're doing tonight. a good job. They're good. Everyone who's at the table right now, imagine them in your mind. Mm -hmm. What percentage of them are not Indian food eaters? At our tables? At our table right now, mm -hmm. in this moment. 88% of our people that listen to this eat Indian, Indian food, food regularly. So when I go into a thing, tell me about Sog Paneer so we can educate our friends. That's unnecessary. Don't you like it when you can talk to a podcast? Like when you're talk when the podcasters are talking and then you're talking back to them while they're talking? Well, I would think that an educated audience that knows what we're talking about would be like saying, oh yeah, this is what I do, Joe. Or yeah, that's what we get too, Joe. That's how Why I imagine our audience. Why does he put pico audience. in his guacamole? That's not even guacamole. Yeah. I don't know if that's true or not. I just imagine you guys talk because that's what I do. Yeah. Do not do you do that? I know my mom does because she tells me that she does. I'm trying to think. Uh, the podcasts that I listen to are a lot of interviewing yeah. and I'm engaged. I have a banter type podcast that is also an interview, but it's three guys interview. It's Smartless. I, less, I listen to Smartless every week. Mm -hmm. Smartless comes up on my subscriptions and it's boom, listen. That one's popular. I'm sure Jace, people are... Uh, just, yeah, Jason, I listen to that too. Jason Bateman, uh -huh. Will Arnett. They're both from Arrested Development, one of my favorite shows ever. Uh -huh. And Sean Hayes from Will and Grace. Uh -huh. Those three guys, huh. bullshit. Uh -huh. And then they interview a great celebrity guest. Huh. But it's their rapport those right. three like really, really good friends that are busting each other's balls and making yeah. jokes on each other. And to me, a large level of empathy mm -hmm. and concern and reality, I, I just like it very much. But do you talk to them? Oh, you asked me a question? Um, <laughs> no. Interesting. So it's, it is. But our guests are talking to us right now, like moving well, along, Joe. We don't care about Smartless. <laughs> no, no, no. I think they do care. I think they do care. I'm just thinking about this is my whole perception thing. I always tell you because I'm looking at this world now from what do I see inside my brain compared to what do you see inside your brain? Well, my brain imagines our audience talking back at us, like, you know, they're driving their car and they're like, Oh, Aislinn, shut up. And then they're like, I yeah, I do exactly I what Joe does. Thing. Joe loves yeah, yeah, yeah. These, these things. This is a great yeah. guest that you're talking about. The guest <laughs> that you're talking about is amazing. <laughs> is maybe one of my best friends. That's how I do this, Joe. Yeah, just like you. And why is she got to be so mean? Dang, I'm so, I'm kind of tough on myself. Actually, that's not what I think about at all. I do think, though, that people talk to the podcast because that's what I do. You know, I also know that we have people that do engage in the social media world. Mm -hmm. I think last week's episode got a little bit of interest. People were interested in this concept of projection and reflection. That was interesting the way people responded to it. That's your perception of the situation. Exactly. That's exactly the truth. What about the few people that don't eat Indian food? Oh, I wonder if they feel bad right them. now. No, that's not it. Just because, listen, I already said earlier that when it comes to the movies, there's a bell curve. There's always a bell curve. And there's the majority, and then there's the spectrum. And you often fall on one side of the spectrum when you look at things. So the people that are not the 88%, they are the kind of people that are super cool. They don't care. It just is a particularly not something they're interested in. And there's always people that fall on that end of the bell curve of anything you're talking about, like I am with kind of some of the more graphic, gory, negative, high anxiety, fear-based, shame and guilt movies. I was trying to think of the perfect movie title that would have been the, exactly the movie you just described. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? Oh, no. I think you'd like that one. No, I do like that one. But it's if it causes oh, anxiety... Oh, you're, you're very difficult. No, but I liked it a long time ago. I guess I just need to If it causes about anxiety it. now, I just it's not worth it to me. Like, just because I like something in the past doesn't mean I really... I need to think of it as a fun game. Mm-hmm. That I could really lose when I take you to go see Men, for example. <laughs> oh, I think the worst was when you took me to see that movie where the woman from the 70s or whatever, 
And I like literally felt sick in the movies. Oh, I don't uh, know. But... One Night in Soho. Yeah. It was the 50s, not the 70s. Men, I was just like, that was just, I was just, I was kind of irritated. But that Soho he movie, I was like, that made I'd me like physically it? sick. I'm like, Last Night in Soho. Yeah. Last Night in Soho. I don't like high anxiety. I don't like, mm -mm. if it makes my stomach hurt, no. We've, we've, we've exhausted this. Yeah, we have. You leaving for the weekend means I'm home alone. Were you while you're gone. Put the Christmas tree ornaments on the Christmas tree. Our brand new live Christmas tree. Yeah, we have a live Christmas tree. I like it. It's pretty. It smells good too. Yeah, I'll put some lights in. Do uh, you want me to wait for you for decorations? Sure, whatever. But mostly, I just want to get it done. Magic. I need you to do some behind the scenes with me, would you? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say one, two, three, and we're gonna whisper in unison. Follow up. One, two, three. Follow up. Ooh. Unanswered question. Follow up. We have our annual family gift exchange. Mm -hmm. I'm putting Crocs on my wish list. Mm -hmm. Two pairs. Okay. My outside Crocs uh -huh. and my inside Crocs. That would be my first steps towards moving into a shoeless home. You said it perfectly mm -hmm. last week. Yeah. Joe, you don't have to employ shoeless home for the whole house. Mm -hmm. If it's something you want to check out, why don't you check it out? Lead the way. Exactly. Do your own thing. We'll follow a good idea. Mm -hmm. Well, it has to be shoes that don't come inside mm -hmm. and then something to wear around the house if you don't want to walk around barefoot. So there's going to be a pair of Crocs, mm -hmm. green, maybe red. Maybe blue. A specific color is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. That I wear only inside. They're yelling, Joe, get on with the story. I was just trying to do a bit. Then I'm going to have my outdoor Crocs that have like an outdoor sole that only go outside. Uh-huh. Okay. Here's my problem. And anyone can relate to this. We get in and out of this home in three doors. I think your problem is you're going to wear your shoes inside. I, I think you'll catch me wearing my shoes inside. I'm not going to catch you doing anything. No, catch would be... This is yeah, your I choice. I understand your point. No. Yeah, I get it. You're not adding anything more in my life to patrol you for uh, and then be mad at me for patrolling you Okay, let you me for. think about Thank that. You. Let me think about that idea. If you said that you were doing this, and Joe, if you see me wearing my shoes inside, point it out to me. It means that, yeah, you're taking zero responsibility for yourself. There's an opportunity here for you to learn something. We have three doors in the house that we go in and out of. And you know better than I do that I might go out the back door and then need to come in the front door. Oh, yeah. And then I do it every go day, out the back day, door. Times a day. And then I can't find my shoes. I took my shoes off in one of three spots and I'm making laps inside the house to find my shoes. So do I need three pair of inside Crocs and three pair of outside no. Crocs so that one no. is by each door? No. But then they're you know just going to collect in one spot. Don't scale up before you've learned how to farm. Oh, I see. I just need to plant the initial seeds. Hmm. It's almost like we planned this whole conversation out. <laughs> I assure you we did not. <laughs> I don't even need to plan the conversations out anymore. This is going well for me. When I began looking at only my own perception and recognizing this was my oh, okay. perception and right. only your own perception and recognizing this is only your perception. Yeah, yeah. That's not on my list over here. Uh, yeah. I know it's not. I know. Well, hey, while we're in this intellectual vibe, why don't you kick over a question we can deep dive into? I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Make it a good one. Last week's was a good one. What's the hardest thing you ever had to do? Yeah, that yeah. came out good. People like that. It got talked about in some other groups. And I didn't even bring it up. I have a great question here from our box of questions. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I'll be able to come up with an answer. Okay. Yeah, let's go for this. Usually when you can't answer, it's not, it's not because you can't answer. It's because you don't want to publicly answer the question that they're oh, asking. Oh, that's a very good point. It's a very good point. I know. <laughs> I don't. You tell me how right you are. What very difficult cuts would you make if you were the superintendent of your school district? What very difficult cuts? Yeah. What cuts would you make if you were the superintendent? Oh, all of the your bullshit that they use building buildings and putting up fences and all the things that they do to Whoa, like so imprison right. our children into uh, into fortresses. All of that. All of that. It would be easy. No one would want me to be the superintendent of the school because I'd. I, I wouldn't do it that. What about the construction companies and yeah. fence companies yeah. that rely on new construction? I get it. I know the moment that I say that, I'm like, oh, yeah, daddy puts a new pair of shoes on because we put up a fence at another school. I promise you, 
There's plenty of people that, I mean, like you asked me a question specifically about what I, what I do if I was a superintendent. No, you, you missed my point. Yes, specifically you're talking about that business, but. If you take away one type of labor, there's always another type of labor that evolves. I think always. the construction companies are going to have something to say about your ideas. Oh, of course. No one would want me to be the superintendent. That's why I'm not a superintendent of schools. Well, it's just interesting to me that we in this city, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, are going through a construction boom of new schools. We're also... Yeah, and I voted against all of those bonds. I was going to say, we're also every single election cycle, every two years, adding a lot of bond money. Just say no. I don't I, I don't agree with any of that, those right. buildings. I don't but agree with it. But the structure, the system that does is not going to like your ideas very much. And that's why I think you will never be superintendent. <laughs> that's the truth. And if I had said all this stuff when I was running for mayor, I wouldn't be the mayor. And we're, and we're, oh. only, and we're only talking about one aspect of it, and that's the aspect of new construction. That's the first thing that you listed. But what about curriculum? Oh, you mean all the testing and all that other bullshit too? Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like an unschool mom at this point, but my kids aren't in school. Right. Listen, if my ex-husband hadn't been the superintendent and hadn't been involved in all of that, I, my kids wouldn't have gone to school. I know you this. You would have homeschooled? Yeah. yeah. It would have ended up happening even if it didn't happen immediately. Like the reason my kids ended up in public school is because my ex-husband was a public school and administrator. Because that is your... literally the only reason we, I was talking yeah. about. I, it was a real, and because he wasn't. And those are, that's because of your deep, deep, deep religious conv values? Right. I'm being sarcastic. It's because I saw that 20 years ago, the school system was a disaster I did not learn. I learned so little from our public education system, like in reality. Oh, you anecdotally. Ugh. I think about that now. I mean, don't get me wrong. I went to school for however many ridiculous years that I went to school for, and yeah. I clearly learned some things. I think but that's because that I'm extremely intelligent and I do research when I'm asked to do research. I think public education and the way it is delivered in 2022 is bound to be a little broken if we're doing it more or less the same way that we were doing it in 1940 or 50. That is too big of a gap. I think it's deeper Things than that, have changed yeah. too much to think that that's a cookie cutter thing that we can continue pressing down on a society. We're I'm too not, different than we were. I'm not 100% impressed with the um, evolution of societal norms and the public education system, the governments, the systems that exist today got us here. But here's the thing. I can say it in that kind of like truth telling aban reckless abandonment because I was saying it 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is what's coming. We care more about the people that are entertainers in sports than we do about the educators. Then we spend our money on the structure to keep them inside as if it is a prison. I've been inside there. It feels like prison to me. Yeah. As long as they close the back door and the gunman doesn't come in. I don't even want to go there anymore. I'm done with this conversation. It makes my stomach hurt. Is that the end of the episode? <laughs> <laughs> What's your answer to the question that you couldn't answer? Because you don't want to give your public answer. No, that's not really what I meant. I think you said it pretty well. We're not parents of school kids anymore. One more year and my daughter will be out of it forever. And I therefore don't have a lot of mental energy that I've put into how to save the system that my kids won't be at. Yeah, I'm trying to turn myself away from caring anymore about the system. So that's a good way to look at it. The more I pull myself out of it, the less I have to care about it. There are people at the table right now that have all the answers. I wish that I knew what some of those answers would be. There is nobody at this table anywhere that has all the answers. I disagree with that 100%. No, I just meant they're talking right now to oh, the they're podcast talking with the answers to the questions. With their answers yeah, yeah, from yeah. their perception. Yeah. I agree. And mine is, here, you know what? I want to have like a caveat. I want to have it called like, this is the asterisk that you add to every single thing that you say or think about when you're talking to someone. Every single thing I say is from my perception. Mine. Everything I've seen, been through, experienced, inherited, right. all of that. This is my perception. Right. You will never be able to see things from my perception. Right. So we have to take your perception, my perception, recognize that those are not the whole's perception, and then figure out where do all those points come together and how do we decide how to move forward in a societal norm. Yeah, two people agreeing on everything is hard enough. 
add 7 billion to the fold. 7.9. That's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Tweaking my algorithm to match yours. Well, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Dinner Table Talks. We will be back next Monday with a fresh episode. In the meantime, hit us up on social media, send us an email, DM us, whatever. We want to hear from you. And we hope that you're enjoying the episodes as much as we enjoy creating them for you. <laughs> <laughs>